Welcome to my very first video where I'll be showing you how I design and build a build team for the home theater I'm working on in the basement. I'm Tony and on this channel we're going to be talking about designing spaces. Anything to make that room that looks like this, turn it into a room that looks like this. So if you are like me that loves room transformations, let me tell you we are going to be such a good friends. Now, let's talk about the movie theater I'm working on in the basement. It is still in progress. I still have to work on the floor, walls, and everything around. But I wanted to share with you how I built the build team, which is the focal point of this room. So let me begin talking about the design. First, before buying anything, I recreate my whole basement in SketchUp that allows me to plan exactly how I want the room to look like. And also, it helps me to plan all my materials. For this project, this is the built-in look I'm looking for. I also wanted to spend as less money as possible with compromising the look. And to achieve this, I decided to use half-inch thick MDF for the lateral panels and three-quarter thick particle board for the back panel and shelves. This is cheaper than use plywood. I use a SketchUp extension called Open Cut List that analyzes all components and after entering some information on the materials to be used, it generates the kind diagram that then I follow. I started by cutting down to size all pieces needed for the carcasses from the 4 by 8 feet MDF and particle board sheets using circular saw and a track guide system that I get from Amazon, which helps me to make a straight line across the long sheet. Once I had all pieces cut down to size, I laid them down in every surface I could find around the garage and cleaned the sawdust with a vacuum to have them ready for paint. Usually at this point you will assemble everything and then paint it, but I decided to paint everything first. I will be adding one seal coat, then sand it, prime it, sand it again, paint it, and finally add a top coat to protect the surface. I'm using shellac as a sealer because I already had it, and this small foam brush to apply the sealer, but I do not recommend to use a brush that small. Instead, I found the last high-density roller I had that day and this definitely worked way better. I let all the pieces dry overnight, mainly because it was already late, but actually she liked dries very fast. Next day, using my random orbit sander, I sanded everything up to 220 grit. Then I flipped over every single board and I did exactly the same thing. I used a tack cloth to remove all dust and get the surface ready for primer. This is the primer I'm using, bull size 123 by Zinzer. Once all pieces were dry, I sanded everything again. Black paint on flat finish was my pick to paint everything. Once everything was dry from the first coat, I realized that I needed a second coat. Finally, time for the top coat. I'm using a mixture of polyurethane water based in matte finish mixed with some of the black paint I used. And this is how the finished surface looks like. If we look up close to the particle board and put it side by side to the MDF, there's not that much of a difference. Particle board is a little bit more grainy, but you can't really tell which one is which one by touching them. They both feel pretty smooth. Once I had all my pieces painted and dry, I took them to the basement for assembly and install. I started with the bottom shelf. First, I marked the line of the lateral panel that indicates the center of the board thickness, which is where my screws will be. Then, I drilled my pilot holes. Then, I countersink my pilot holes using a countersink drill bit same size as the head of the screws I'm using for assembly. Next, I did exactly the same for the other shelves. I'm using an L-square ruler clamped to the top and a speed square at the bottom to make sure that everything is parallel and straight. Then I flip over the whole cabinet and I secure the back panel using six screws. Oh 
I repeated the same process all over again and now we have two cabinets. There used to be a wall-to-wall -wall bookshelf here before and the only thing that remains are some 2x4s that are nailed to the floor. So I'll be reusing them as the base for my new built in I just needed to add a new row of 2x4s to compensate for the new dimensions. And as this new row will be visible, I apply paint and top coat. I bought a moisture underlayment that I installed with staples on top of my base to protect the built-in from moisture as I won't be replacing this section of the floor and the current vinyl tile is glued directly on the basement concrete. With both cabinets in place, I started working on the frame that will be in between and will hold the projector screen. Before screwing all together to its final position, I aligned everything, checking that it was squared and level. Using screws, I fixed both cabinets to the 2x4 studs at the bottom, side and back. Then I secured the frame structure as well. I drilled 2 inch holes to each shelf that I'll be using to pass through any cables if needed and drilled some pocket holes underneath to use them for the face frame installation. For the lighting, I'm installing LED strip lights to each shelf that I cut from one single strip. I got these plastic connectors that allows me to connect the LED strip to a piece of wire and added few drops of super glue to the plastic part of the wire and LED strip to avoid any movement inside the connector. I bought a cut around shoe molding that I'll be using to glue the LED strip to its rounded side. This will point the LED strip in a 45 degrees angle inside the shelf. I don't really have a good experience with the glue of the LED strips, so I added a few drops of super glue just to make sure that it holds in place. I secured the plastic connector with some electrical tape. And this is how it looks like, I just needed to do it uh, 7 more times. I drilled a small hole to pass through the cable of the LED strip and used liquid nails glue to hold it in place. Added some drops of hot glue on the sides just to keep it in place until the liquid nails dries. Before letting the glue dry, I thought this would be a good moment to check all LED strips work. Yeah, they did. Now it's time to work on the face frames. I started by cutting down 2 inch wide MDF strips using the table saw, then added pocket holes for later assembly. I bought 4 yards of velvet fabric from Amazon, which is the material I will be using to wrap my face frames. I'm going to leave the link in the description because I really recommend this fabric. I tried to get some more fabric similar for another project later at my local store and the velvet fabrics they had were 4 times the price and they didn't even look as dark as this one. I sprayed 3M glue thinking that this will hold the fabric all around the frame parts, but it didn't work. I ended up using staples on the back to keep it in place. I assembled everything using pocket screws and I was very careful to follow the correct dimensions. Once I aligned the finished face frame, I used brad nails to hold it in place and then secure it with screws using the pocket holes I drilled previously. I started working on the final details and the first thing I did was to cover those holes with plastic grommets I got. To hide the sections that the projector screen won't be covering, I added two large MDF pieces also wrapped with black velvet on the bottom and on the top. For the two doors, I will be using speaker fabric basically sandwiched between two MDF frames. The frame on the back will be a quarter inch thick and the one on the front will be a half inch thick. Using the same black velvet fabric, I wrapped the pieces for the front frame and the pieces for the back frame, I just painted them because they won't be visible. Then, assembled the front frame using pocket screws. This is the speaker fabric I'll be using, cut it down to size and using the staples, I secure it on one side, then the opposite side, making sure to stretch it to avoid any unwanted wrinkles. 
The second frame which basically is there just to cover the ugly back side of the front frame and the edge of the speaker fabric, I secured it just by using small nails. Next is the installation of the hinges. Hinges I got are half inch overlay so I use a scrap piece of half inch MDF to mark how far my hinges should be from the door edge. Once both hinges were installed, I used a quarter inch thick scrap piece of MDF to maintain the same gap between the door and the face frame while I was installing the screws. This is the magnetic door latch that I decided to install. These are cabinet switches that I'll be installing on each shelf with door to have the LED strip light on only when the door is open. As the switches were the last components needed to be installed to start working on the wiring, I continued to trim all the wires to its final length and connect them together protecting the connections with heat shrink tubes. And I secure all wires using some clips. Each shelf has 27 LEDs. I have eight shelves, so that gives me a total of 216 LEDs. And each LED needs 0.02 amperes, so 216 LEDs require around 4.32 amperes. And that's why I bought a five amperes power supply adapter. I also needed a power supply splitter cord and a Wi-Fi smart LED controller, which is rated for up to 12 amperes. The splitter cord connects directly to the power supply. Then using double-sided tape, I fixed the power supply and the LED controller. The other side of the splitter core is for the shelves with doors, as these should have power all the time because they should turn on and off depending if the doors are closed or open, so I wired them together to a female connector and connected directly to the splitter core. Wires from the remaining LEDs were connected directly into the LED controller. And finally, I get to test that the door switch worked. Using the Smart Life app, I added the LED controller and verified it worked as expected using Google Home. I cut out circles from the fabric to cover the screws. <laughs> Lastly, I'm screwing in a French clip to hang the projector screen and some scrap wood at the bottom to support the projector screen frame, keeping the same distance from the built-in frame as the top. I'm not going to get into details on how to do the screen right now as I'll be doing some upgrades to it and that will be another video coming soon. So if you want to see the upgraded version of this screen, don't forget to subscribe. Like the video if you find any useful information or any idea for your own project and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And now let's get into some final b-roll shots. But before that, thanks for watching, I'm Tony and see you next time.